Hi, I'm Doug and this is Atomic Age Pictures and uh, tonight we're going to do another episode of Rocky Jones Space Ranger. Um, what I find interesting about this show is that for early 1950s television it's kind of unique. Um, many of you may not know that early 50s television was for the most part broadcast live. It wasn't recorded at all in the most, for the most part. It went out live and then that was it. There was no record of it. There was no way to play it back. <clears throat> there was no way to save it. Um, with the exception of a few shows where they would actually film the show off of a TV screen. And that was a process called kinescope. That's the way that most of the Honeymooners episodes survive to this day. But Rocky Jones Space Ranger was different in that it was actually filmed on 35 millimeter movie film. And this allowed them not only to save the show for future use, but also to do much more sophisticated special effects than was being done in any of the other children's science fiction shows of the day. Um, it allowed them to do multiple exposures and mats, and uh, they've got rocket ships landing and rendezvousing in space. It was really pretty amazing for its time. I know it looks dated today, but if you think about 1954, this was pretty big stuff, for a, especially for a television budget for a kid's show. Now, Rocky Jones was originally presented in half-hour episodes, and they were, for the most part, had a three-episode story arc. And you would get to the end of the episode, and there would be a sort of a cliffhanger, not unlike the serials that we see on this channel. Um, and then you would come back the next week to find out what happened. In this case, most of those episodes have been edited together into a single program. So in this case, this particular episode, I believe, is an hour and 10 minutes or something along those lines. Tonight's episode is called Beyond the Moon. When it originally aired, it was called Beyond the Curtain of Space. I just love these titles. I think as a kid in 1954, the title alone would have made me want to watch this show. This aired originally on February 23rd, 1954. So here it is, Beyond the Moon. I hope you enjoy and come back at the end and I'll have a little bit more information about this show. millions of miles this trip, and that calls for time off. XB-2 calling Office of Space Affairs. Come in, please. This is the XB-2 calling Office of Space Affairs. Come in. Come in, XB-2. State Celestial Position. This is Rocky Jones of the Space Rangers reporting. Celestial Meridian, 58 degrees, parallel 146 degrees. We're now in second breaking ellipse of Earth, requesting landing clearance at approximately 1600. You're dead center on Baker flight path, Rocky. Right or in, we're all clear and waiting for you. Well, hold it. Here's Secretary Drake, sir. Welcome home, Rocky. Thank you, sir. I'm certainly glad to be back. Was it a rough trip? More or less routine, sir. Uh, much more, more than less, less, Mr. Secretary. Believe me. <laughs> I can believe you, Winky. Come in the office when you land, boys. I'll have your leave papers ready. Oh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, sir. Out. Alert to ground crew, a 
alert to ground crew. Now learn this. XV-2 on Baker flight path, now at 85,000. Prepare for landing. I just drove through number three gate without stopping for identification. Okay, lock her up in the barn, boys. Hey, what about the seashore, Rocky? I know a place called Paradise Isle. Balmy nights and soft music under a big tropical moon. White sands washed by an emerald sea. How's it sound? Let's see what Drake has to say about that, huh? But he's already said it. Leave papers. Look out, Wendy. Hey, you know something? It's safer up there. But, uh, who wants to be up there? Come on, Skipper. Do you know you're a trespasser? On any foot of that mountain road, you could have been destroyed. Yes, yes, Mr. Secretary, but I had to take the chance. What's your name? Vina Ray. And your reason for being here? Professor Newton. I have no interest in anything that concerns the professor. I know, I know. You believe he's a traitor to the United Worlds of the solar system. Yes, his own words prove it. But, Mr. Secretary, during our exchange of scientists with the officious group, I was an interpreter. When the rest of us left, I shook hands with the professor. His eyes tried to tell me something. He gave me this. To Professor Newton from Secretary Drake, with profound gratitude and eternal friendship. But Mr. Secretary, why did he leave the medal in my hand? He must have wanted me to bring it to you. I don't know. Professor Newton recorded his decision on film. The Ophetians left it at our outpost on Cecinus to be delivered to me. It is proof positive. Griff, project the Newton Declaration. Yes, sir. One moment, please. Mission complete and job well done, boys. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And now I have new orders. <laughs> Here are your leave papers. Relax. Oh. <laughs> Stretch out and watch the stars as something beautiful and mysterious, not as places you've been to make friends or to fight our enemies. Report back on the 20th. Hey, Rocky, two months leave. How about that? Ready with the Newton Declaration, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Griff. Enjoy your time off, boys. You've earned it. Thank you, sir. Come on, Skipper. Let's not waste a second of that two months. Paradise Island, here we come. Wait a minute, Winky. As long as we're here, let's see the Newton Declaration, too, huh? When ready, Griff. Mind if we join you, Mr. Secretary? Please do, Rocky. Secretary Drake, may I first say this? The decision to remain on Ophetius is mine and mine alone. I have been influenced by neither word nor act. These people Oh, my friends, perhaps, thinking singularly, I would not have made such a drastic move and severed the ties of a lifetime. But I must consider my young ward, Bobby. A long life stands before him, and not through heritage, but by my choice, he can now share in the triumph and the glory of Ophetius. Come here, Bobby. Newton wanted Bobby to become a space ranger. He said it a thousand. Shh. Mr. Secretary, you've heard my wish. 
my declaration. Now, Bobby, say goodbye to our friends. Goodbye, Mr. Secretary. And please, sir, say hello to Rocky Jones, to Winky, and to the rest of the Space Rangers. A detailed letter made his breach complete. He surrendered all his property, even the Newton Observatory. I'm sorry, sir, but I just can't believe it. Professor Newton was either drugged or forced to make that declaration by a threat on Bobby's life. That's true, Mr. Secretary. He's their prisoner. With your permission, sir, I'd like to find out. Hey, Rocky. Oh, well. Another day, another moon, maybe. Officious. As you know, Rocky, they asked us to close our embassy. You won't be welcome either. Yes, I understand, sir. But it could happen that we were lost in space and forced to land, couldn't it? I'm sure they're not prepared to invite open warfare by imprisoning a couple of space rangers. Yeah, but they will be soon with Professor Newton on their side, huh, Rocky? It's a gamble, but worth the chance, sir. to officious. Drake now believes Professor Newton prisoner. Rocky Jones may attempt rescue flight. We'll get it through, Griff. Any further orders? Stand by. If rescue flight is attempted by Rocky Jones, we'll inform you of blast off time and refuel station. We're to destroy his orbit jet before it reaches your zone. And the blame placed on you. Out. This is the curtain which separates our League of Planets from the officious group. From that point on, they are able to jam our met. You pass that point, you'll be without a communication link. You'll be on your own, Rocky. It'll be dangerous. I understand, sir. We'll make it, though. Now, where will our refuel station be? That's up to you. May I suggest space station RV-5? That's stretching the first hop, and there's very little traffic there. Right. And in the interest of secrecy, I'll declare the area out of bounds, except to commercial craft. Now, for your crew. Well, so that those on the other planet can't claim invasion, Winky and I should go it alone. We'll disable our ship, land, search for Professor Newton and Bobby, and try to bring them back with us. Please, Mr. Secretary. Can't I go? <laughs> it's out of the question. Why? Would that make it an invasion? No, but it's not a picnic, either. I don't like picnics. What I mean is, a flight like this is no place for a girl. I'm not a girl. I mean, yes, I am, but I'm not a girl in the way you mean I'm a girl. I'll take care of myself, Rocky Jones. I can be a real help to you. Please, Mr. Secretary, I know these people. I speak their language and I know their country. And for your information, Mr. Rocky Jones, I'm also licensed as a navigator. This Ray would be extremely valuable as an interpreter. We mustn't pass up any chance to make the mission a success. Planetary conditions will be ideal at 0230. If you'll state my crew, sir, I'll prepare for blast-off. Winky will go, and Vina Ray will be signed on as Auxiliary Space Ranger. Very good, sir. Ranger Ray, prepare to stand inspection at 0200. Very good, sir. on platform. Do your best to bring back Professor Newton, but please, Rocky, no unnecessary chances. Yes, sir, I understand, sir. Oh, we wouldn't dare because we have a girl board. It isn't that. We don't want to lose any of you, any more than Professor Newton and Bobby. I'm sorry, sir. Move in boarding platform. Switch on blast off synchronizer.
to W-O-X. Griff to W-O-X. Come in. W-O-X to Griff. Come in, Griff. Rocky Jones blasting off at 0230. Refuse space station is RV-5. Area declared out of bounds, making it ideal for attack without interference. We'll be waiting for him, Griff. Over. <laughs> spaceship before? Sure, on an interplanetary express. That's about as exciting as a streetcar. The orbit jet is different, believe me. Well, that noise is our blast-off synchronizer, and when those two sounds get together, we'll be up there. Really? Uh-huh. Uh, there's your navigating table, navigator. Have fun. Before this trip is over, you two will be mighty glad I came along. How's the new crew member, our glamour girl navigator? <laughs> Not a thing to worry about, Rock. I hate to admit it, but she sure knows her stuff. All right, you ready, Winky? Ready, sir. <laughs> see where it helps having a girl aboard on a dangerous mission like this. Well, she speaks your patient's language, Rocky, and that's what we'll need if we make a successful landing there. I'd rather have an extra pair of fists. Anybody understands that language? Oh, give her a break, Rocky. She's a good kid. Uh, we're entering the exosphere. Switch on artificial gravity. Artificial gravity, sir. Go to work grabbing Gertie and don't lose your grip. Correct drift point one by point four. One before, sir. Pardon, sir, but we've entered the exosphere. And may I suggest a drift correction? Point one by point four. Good charting, Vina. Thanks, Winky. Awaiting orders, sir. You're a little late. What should I do, sir? Return to quarters and uh, knit me a sweater. Sorry, sir. I don't know how to knit. But if I did, I'd make you a muffler and maybe tie it real tight around your neck. Approaching from two o'clock. No. Are you positive, or is this merely a woman's intuition? I said, and I repeat, there's an object approaching us very rapidly. She was right before Rocky. Quick, Quickie, get Drake on Astrophone. Yes, sir. What can I do, Rocky? Nothing. Just stay out of the way. 
XV2 calling Officer Space Affairs. Come in, Officer Space Affairs. XV2 calling Officer Space Affairs. Come in, Officer Space Affairs. Acknowledge, please, we're under attack. Enemy unknown. XV2 calling Officer Space Affairs. Come in, Officer Space Affairs. We're under attack. Mayday. 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 channel, Rocky. All right, we'll make a fight of it. Prepare to return fire. Aye, aye, sir. Please, Rocky, what can I do? Secure in your blast chair. But I... That's an order, and stay there. Sir. I can't nail him if you don't hold course. Ready, Winky? Ready, sir. Approaching target. Steady. Steady, sir. On it, Winky. Fire one. Care of them, whoever it was. Level off for free fall, Winky, while I check the damage. Aye, aye, sir. You all right, Vina? Yes, but what happened, Rocky? What is it? We were lucky at that. Yeah, I had to seal it off before we were sapped of oxygen. Rocky! Blinky! Oh, Winky, if our luck holds on, we can limp into the space station. Hey, call Vina forward. Let's see how she likes being a space ranger now. <laughs> Vina, Rocky says you should... Vina! Vina! Rocky! What is it? It's Vina. She's sealed in. What? I hope we're not too late. The door's champ, Winky. I'll have to cut it open. Prepare for shock therapy. Set up the regeneration units. And Winky, get off the oxygen helmets. Once I cut through, the ship will be dry of air. Hurry! Aye, aye, sir.
Take charge, Winky. I think she'll be all right. She helped save our lives. We've got to save hers. I'll get us to the space station as soon as possible. Calling space station RV-5. Come in, RV-5. This is the XV-2 calling space station RV-5. Come in, RV-5. RV-5 to XV-2. Glad to hear from you. Rocky, this is Space Ranger Clark. Why am I glad to see you? I've got a crippled ship. If you were landed in more than one piece, I'd certainly be surprised. Hold on. I'll see the magnetic couple will pick you up. We got you, Rocky. Relax and we'll pull you in. Thanks, Clark. Out. Oh, Vena. Gee, I'm glad to see you up and around. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry I caused so much trouble. Oh, that's all right. Could happen to anyone. Thank you, sir. And I'm going to make up for it and prove that I can be it. Well, that a girl can be, is it? Vena. Yes, sir. I've been thinking it over. There's an express that stops at the space station, and, well, it might be best to... If I were on it? Yes, sweetie. You see, what's happened so far could be called routine for a space ranger, so... It's really no place for... Well, what I mean is it's best if you go back to Earth. Say it. It's no place for a girl. Now listen to me, Rocky Jones. In the first place, I was the one who spotted the enemy ship. Remember? Now look, Vina, don't Go get... ahead, be the referee. Don't count me out. I can say what I think about you in 37 different languages. I'll start with the Martians. You're nothing but a big bow of that. Our nephew may call you a... Rocky Jones. I meant every single word I said. Uh, you'll never get her on that express to Earth, Rocky. And you know, I've got a feeling that she's going to come in mighty handy when we make that forced landing on Ophetius. RV-5 to Earth Headquarters, Office of Space Affairs. Station RV-5 to Earth Headquarters, Office of Space Affairs. Secretary Drake speaking. Come in, RV-5. This is Clark, Mr. Secretary. I'm ready with report on flight codename Haystack. Anxious to have it, Clark. Send it over the scrambler. Ready here, sir. Proceed, Clark. report on Rocky Jones' mission to Ophesis. That's it, sir. Thanks, Clark. Over and out. Damage to orbit jet repaired on space station. Area thoroughly searched, but no trace of attacking ship nor clue to identity. Who did it, sir? Any idea? Griff, I'd give our claim to Aquarius to find out who it was. A tough order, sir. A sudden attack out of space by an unidentified ship? Could it be space pirates, sir? The blast off from Space Island was successful at 0814. 
Rocky Jones, Winky, and Vina Ray aboard. In daily communication, Rocky Jones reports flight without incident. Yesterday's message garbled, and now out of contact. Must assume that Rocky is through the curtain and flying in the officious formation. Winky, we've just entered the officious formation. They should be spotting us any minute. Well, then we better be on the alert, Rocky. Right you are, Winky. chemicals and alloys. It's a long and tedious task. Oh, it's like trying to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. But don't worry, Doc Anto. I'm not one to give up. Professor Newton, you're using the same formula as on Earth? Exactly. Oh, but tomorrow. Tomorrow? And the same I... material! You were tested, Professor Newton, and I find you won't cooperate. You know what that means! I... Let go! Oh, <laughs> Professor Newton, you've been granted extraordinary privilege. Bobby has been near you and allowed a weekly visit. Proudly, I say, my own son does not know my face, as Bobby will not long remember yours. Joypax! The walk on Bobby de Martantavac. No, I won't go! Professor Newton! Bobby! Down! Hey, Yes, Professor Newton? I pledge my complete cooperation. I thought you'd finally see it my way. How's she going, Rock? Look, Winky. Ah, the efficient beams picked us up, huh? But still no challenge? Not a word. I don't like it. Oh, this is spook land for sure. Trokovic and Sparkano, Trokovic. Sparkano and Ophian. Oh, that must be their challenge now. Place range array, forward, please. Vina. Translate the incoming Trifanto. message. Trokovic and Sparkano. It's a repeat to identify and state destination. Shall I answer an officiant, sir? No, not yet. They'll know the universal distress signal, Helipso. That's all I want them to know at the moment. Helipso! Helipso! Rocky Jones of the airship XV-2 in distress. Helipso! Come in, XV-2, and declare nature of emergency. Starboard control rockets conked out. Request permission to land and repair. Do you know you've transgressed the Ophetian boundary? We could disintegrate you with no questions asked. My apologies. It was unavoidable. I now ask that you recognize Article 7 of our treaty. Rocky Jones? May I speak to someone in authority? I am Cleolata, the suzerain of Ophetius. Yes, I will respect the treaty. You have my permission to land. Ellipse our planet. We will then assign approach path and clearance. Nintendo and Tove. Nintendo and Tove. I guess that means Roger and out. You catch on fast, Winky, it does. Winky, go after to knock out one of the starboard rockets. 
Do enough damage so we'll have at least a week to find Professor Newton and Bobby while you make repairs. Oh, Rocky, all that work. Couldn't we just pretend? Orders, orders. We've got to stay there a week. Come on now, beat it. Fortunately, Griff prepared us for Rocky Jones' arrival. Now to prepare Professor Newton and the boy. Bobby. Please, Cleolanta. I'd rather stand. Why'd you send for me? I said sit down. Are you enjoying your visit on Ophetius? It's not a visit. You're keeping us by force. You'll never let us leave. Professor Newton is very valuable to our cause. Too, Bobby, if you study and prepare yourself and cooperate. I don't like what you teach. And if you think you'll ever lick Earth and the United Worlds of the solar system, you've got another thing coming. You may change your mind, Bobby. under our influence. From now on, little Bobby will be cooperative. Now, Professor Newton is next. But Cleolanta, the professor has just pledged his complete cooperation. The work can't continue with the distortion of thoughts. We don't dare risk confusing his brain. That will be my decision, Dargato. Right now, the report Rocky Jones will send back to Earth is more important. This is the XV-2, awaiting further landing instructions. This is Cleolanta, the suzerain of Ophetius. Come in, XV-2, and identify. This is Rocky Jones in the XV-2. We have ellipsed your planet. Now request landing instructions. Set controls for free fall. We will bring you in. When you land, I shall personally extend a welcome to Ophetius. Fintendo and Tov. Fintendo and Tov. Set for free fall? What a system. Say, maybe we got our word officious from their name officious, huh? I'm afraid you're right, Mickey. Well, let's take a look before we land, huh? Free fall, sir. Wow! If that's not the biggest building yet, I'll scramble Scorpio. What is it, Vina? An Alcavar de Governox. What's that in English? It means government headquarters. We'll be taken there. I hope we'll come back out. People have been known not to. I'm anxious to meet this fabulous Rocky Jones. This will be an unexpected pleasure, in more ways than one. You and your friends are free to come and go as you wish. See our country. Look into corners. Search our minds. We have nothing to hide. I only ask for a fair report when you return to Earth. Don't believe a word of it. How long will it take to repair your spaceship? Oh, a week perhaps. We'll do the job as soon as possible. Why not enjoy your stay here, Mr. Jones, and let my technicians do the work? I insist. We can do a much better job. 
I assure you. Letting the rest of the universe know the truth about Ophetius is difficult, Mr. Jones. People who don't understand us go back with lurid tales. While those that do elect to remain and share our life with us in happiness here. Perhaps you know Professor Newton. Why, uh... Why, yes, I do. Young Ward, Bobby. Yes, I know them both very well. Then you must see them at once. I'd like to, Claymont. We're proud of our observatory, Rocky. I'll have Professor Newton show you around. The professor likes it here very much, as you know. Ah, oh, so now it's Rocky, huh? And he's about to crack out with some kid, Cleo. Oh, he's just playing it her way, straying her along. Women always fall for that, you know. Professor Newton. Uh, Here are some friends. Hello, Professor. Hi, Professor. Friends? Why, of course, Rocky Jones and Winky. <laughs> well, well, this is indeed a pleasure and a surprise. Welcome, welcome to a feast. <laughs> we'll leave you alone to enjoy the reunion. Oh, but there's no, no reason for you to leave Cleolanta. Why, well, you... This is like old times, isn't it, Rocky? Eh? <laughs> oh, Professor, you remember Vina Ray? Vina Ray? Well, it seems I should. It was during the exchange of scientists back on Earth that you gave me a medal given you by Secretary Drake, remember? I gave you a medal? Yes, don't you remember? Well, perhaps. Oh, but that's of no matter. Rocky, Rocky, isn't this a wonderful country? So exciting, so stimulating. And look, these instruments, things to work with beyond my wildest dreams. And uh, where's Bobby, Professor? Bobby? Why, of course, Bobby. I'll get him. Hey, uh, maybe they got a bug planted in here so they can overhear our conversations. Maybe the professor knows about it and he's putting on an act. Maybe. But that look in his eyes. He's not the same, Rocky. I know. Shh. Hi there, Bobby. The Space Ranger service hasn't been the same without you round under our heels. We sure miss you. Nice of you to say that, Winky. Welcome to Ophesius, Rocky. Oh, come on, Bobby. Let's see how much you've grown. You used to come up to here, you know. Hide alone isn't the measurement of a man. Nothing appreciable. Remember, you were going to captain one just like her when you grew up. And none of that newfangled stuff, boys. She's got to be just like the orbit jet. I'll captain a spaceship someday, and she'll run rings around the orbit jet. Maybe we'll meet up in space against each other. And I'll like that. Bobby. I'd like to go back to the observatory. All right, Bobby. Take Bobby back to the observatory, please. Goodbye, Bobby. Bye. So long, Bobby. Nothing, huh? And I thought going through the orbit jet would bring him back to his senses. Boy, if we could get him back on Earth for a while, they'd come to their senses quick enough. Hey, maybe we could figure out a way to... We go by the rule of freedom and a man's right to make his own decisions. Professor Newton and Bobby want to stay here on Ophetius, so... There's nothing we can do about it. We used to be friends. I'm sorry it's different now. 
Goodbye, Bobby. Goodbye. Here, I'll help you up the stairs. No! It's cold. It's a prison. Just like the rest of Ophelia's. Say that again, Bobby. No, no. I don't know what I'm saying. Vina, I was just on the orbit jet with Rocky, wasn't I? Yes, Bobby, you were. Please, Vina, go get Rocky for me. I want to talk to him right away. Of course, Bobby. Hurry, Vina. I will, Bobby. With your permission, we'd like to blast off at 0300. So soon. Does this mean you don't like it here? I would like to prolong your visit, Rocky. And I would rather you didn't. Hey, Vina. Looking for me? Where's Rocky? I got a call from Cleo Lanta. Uh, what's reverse English for the government building? An Alcovar de Governox. That's what the man said. That's where Rocky is. Thanks, Winky. Sure. Do I have permission to blast off at 0300? You have no right to detain us, you know. Please, Rocky, sit down. Perhaps you'd rather blast off earlier. 02.30? The time you left Earth? How did you learn that? I also knew of the attack by an unknown spaceship. And a great many other things. Shall I go on? Yes. This is very interesting. Please do. For instance, your mission to bring back Professor Newton and the boy. But they don't want to go back, do they, Rocky? And maybe you won't want to go back either. Any more than they do. I refuse to leave Ophetius. This is my adopted land, and I prefer to remain here. He doesn't mean it, Rocky. He doesn't know what he's saying. Oh, Bobby. Please, Rocky, get us off of here, right away. Bean and Winky are standing by the spaceship. Now, we've been allowed to come and go as we wish. If we're lucky, we can make it for a fast blast off. No, no. Ah, Daganto, my good friend. Fairfax, the professor and Bobby, the condomando. Come along, Bobby, come along. I've already told them we prefer to remain here. Rocky! Yeah. No, I won't go. I want to stay with Rocky. Yes, Dargato? Rocky Jones is trying to force Professor Newton to leave Ophetius. And the boy? He's been... he's been influenced, Cleolanta. Have Rocky Jones step forward. So this is the way you repay the freedom I have granted you. Darganto. Yes, Cleolanta. Bring Rocky Jones to an Alcavar de Governox. It will be his decision to remain on Ophetius.
move on my flight to a fish. Who's your man on Earth? Tell me, who's your spy on our planet? Griff, Griff from the Space Ranger Service. Did you say Griff? Oh! Couple of space rangers, can you, Bobby? Rocky with the professor and Bobby. It looks like trouble. We better prepare for blast off. On the double, Venus. Secure blast off harness and ascend ladder. Hmm? What was that last thing, Winky? To what to what? Never mind, I'll get it. Secure for blast off. Rocky, we're blasting off. Passengers are. Rocky Jones, for instance. <laughs> Griff, traitor, right in headquarters. What are you frowning about, Rocky? He won. The adventure's about over. That's what you think. Just wait and see. Congratulations for a fine blast off. Thanks, Rocky. Thank you, sir. I was talking to Winky. Well, now I'm talking to you, even though you are my commanding officer. Rocky, why don't you get that serious look off your face once in a while? I'll take over, Vina. You better go back with Professor Newton and Bobby. They may need some attention. They've had a rough time. Yes, sir. Ah, the woman's touch. But who's going to say anything against it? Hey, how's the professor, Rocky? Thoroughly confused at the moment. Keeps saying, why are you taking me away from Ophesius? And he rubs his head and can't understand why he said a thing like that. Gosh, that must have been some powerful treatment he got up there. Yes, he still acts as if his brain had been paralyzed, but he's coming around. The ship must be destroyed. Or is it because Rocky Jones is aboard? Your great mistake was in trying to keep him here. I'm going to give the orders to... I give the orders, Darganto. Not you or anyone. Cleolata, if they even reach our communication zone, we lose our best ally on Earth. Our own man in their headquarters. You mean Griff? Yes. Rocky knows we have an ally on Earth. But Rocky can't possibly suppose that he is... But he can, Cleolata. He knows. I... You told him. I was forced to. And you are the strong one. You're a weakling and a traitor. I had no intention of allowing them to go beyond our reach. But neither am I prepared to invite a war just now. In a moment, we'll falsely magnetize their instruments. If the orbit jet crashes into an officious moon, it's not our responsibility. 
that will help correct your mistake. What do you bet they're just pretending to let us get away? Uh huh. Heads they blast us, tails they don't, huh? The odds aren't that good. If they can't have Professor Newton on their side, they certainly don't want him on ours. Well, it's clear sailing ahead. That is, unless they decide to blast us. Is it manual control, Rocky? No, we'll go by instruments. Conserve all power for this long half winter. You know, Wiki, it's hard to understand how a man raised on our Earth could fall in line with the Ophetians and become a spy for them against us. You mean we got one of those things crawling around? Yes. And in the Space Ranger's surface. What? Oh, you must be kidding. Galloping galaxies. I can't believe it. Do you know who it is? Yes. Griff. Griff? Golly. Hey, Griff's at headquarters. That's right. I don't understand it, but looking back, I can believe it. You see, Winky? Griff had a lot of time piled up, including a hop to Ophetius. That's when the bug bit him. That's when he fell for their phony philosophy. Yeah, go on. Then he took advantage of off-Earth time to ask us for an office assignment so he could spy for them. Niven, comments the guy must have got moon fever. He must be nuts to do a thing like that. Well, it's hard to explain a traitor, Winky, but... Well, his main purpose was to infiltrate the heart of our operations. That explains why the Ophetians seemed to know what we were going to do before we did it. Griff tipped them off. Gosh, Rocky, wait till Secretary Drake hears this and realizes that his own assistant... Yes, I know. Well, we'd better bring the log up to date and seal it. And so I... I was forced to make my declaration as I did. Oh, but I hoped you wouldn't believe it, that you'd understand that I was being influenced. Please, Professor, calm yourself. We understand. Vino, please. Come forward to make an entry in the log. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. At your service, sir. Don't worry, Professor. I said things just as bad, if not worse. I told Rocky I wanted to go up against him in a space fight, and I was going to lick him. No. You little Bobby said that. <laughs> and also during this mission, Darganto, a power in the officious formation, admitted under stress that their agent on Earth is Griff. Yes, Mr. Secretary, Griff. The time is now 1535, and we're still within the boundaries of the officious formation. You got that? Mm -hmm. Mr. Secretary, as an integral part of the log of this flight of the XV-2, I wish to make the following entry. I have never had so fine a crew. As an integral part of the log of this flight... Rocky, this includes me. <laughs> Go on, Dana, there's more. Sorry, sir. There's only one T in integral. Southern satellites, that was too close for comfort. So Rocky Jones wasn't going to get beyond our reach, hmm? Silence. I have another plan. You know, Winky, I'm sure glad there's only one T in Integral. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, Rocky. I'm finally in clear contact with Space Station RV-5. Not a relay the message to Earth. Oh, hop and Hercules. Won't Secretary Drake be glad to hear we have the Professor and Bobby aboard? Yes, he will. But our first report has to be unfavorable. Oh, because Griff might intercept it, huh? Yes. Our first report has to be aimed at Griff, not at Drake. 
You see, the spaceship we destroyed must have been their communication link between Earth and Ophetius. Now, that leaves Griff in the dark as to late developments. We've got to keep him that way. Mm, I get you. So until we land back at headquarters, it's safer to let Griff think our flight was a failure. The XV-2 calling space station RV-5, reporting on Operation Haystack. Mission unsuccessful. Unsuccessful? All right, Rocky. I'll relay the message to Drake. Over and out. Well, I guess you can't win all the time. Clark to Secretary Drake. Confidential. Operation Haystack. Come in, headquarters of Space Affairs. Hold on, Clark. I'll call Secretary Drake. Uh, Mr. Secretary. Yes, Griff. Space Station RV-5 reporting, sir, on Operation Haystack. So Rocky made it back. Good. This is Secretary Drake. Send the message over the scrambler, Clark. Ready here, sir. Proceed, Clark. Mission unsuccessful. Professor Newton and Bobby, without apparent influence, seem sincere and determined in their desire to remain on the alien planet. This is a blow to our country, Griff. A staggering blow to the united worlds of the solar system. Yes, sir. Sorry, I had to send this kind of a message, Mr. Secretary. Over and out. Space Station RV-5, Space Ranger Ship XV-2. Come in, XV-2. XV-2, reporting. Pick up by magnetic coupler complete. We'll pull you in. Well, how about it, Rocky? You all in one piece this time, or should I alert the patch crew? All in one piece, Clark. See you soon. Out. Ah, the defeated warriors return at home. What a surprise this is going to be. How are we coming, Rocky? Everything super stellar? Uh, super stellar, Bobby. We're in the magnetic field of Space Station RV-5. Oh, boy. Now to get out and run the hundred. Rocky, I'll bet that way up here on the space uh, island... Sorry, Bobby. I know we all want to get out and stretch our legs a bit, but... Right now, Professor Newton, it's best if you and Bobby stay out of sight in the ship. Oh, don't worry about us, Rocky. We'll do our stretching on Earth, huh? <laughs> Thanks, Professor. Oh, Rocky. Don't lose your faith in people. Remember, it's the exception that proves the rule. Garganto. Garganto? With everything going as planned, why chance a call at this time? Working as planned. What report have you received on the Rocky Jones flight? Mission unsuccessful. Professor Newton remaining unofficious. That's a lie, Griff. A scheme to trap you. One moment. Darkanto? Yes, you. Rocky has proof of your being our agent on Earth. The professor and the boy are with him in the orbit jet. They've told him. Get me off of here before they get back. Listen, Griff. One man strategically placed for sabotage has greater power than an army. I've done your work, Darkanto. Now get me off of here. Use your power, Griff. Wait for the orbit jet to land and then destroy the headquarters of space affairs. 
Well, what about me? Am I so expendable? I didn't say that, but your duty comes first. You may need help, so call in Ramez. The job is important, Griff. You are important. Ramez is expendable. Over and out. uniform. Space Rangers and traitors, they don't go together. Space Affairs immediately for special assignment. I'll clear you through the gates. You have a confidential report for Secretary Drake. Secure from blast out. Home again! Home again! Jiggity Jupiter! It'll be super stellar when we get back on Earth once more. Clear space station. We're in free fall. Firing rockets in two seconds. XB2 calling Office of Space Affairs. Come in, please. Office of Space Affairs to XV2, come in. We're out of Space Station RV5 and I'm about to start primary breaking ellipse of Earth. Glad to have you back, Rocky. What's your landing time? Approximately 0800. Where's Secretary Drake? He's out of the zone. Any message? No, just hello. See you in the morning, Griff. Out. <laughs> Rocky Jones says to say hello. Behave yourself, I'm gonna need you. Come on. Haul us down to the first section. section while I plant and wire this one. XV-2 calling Office of Space Affairs. Come in, please. Office of Space Affairs to the XV-2. Come in. I wonder where Drake is. Completing final braking ellipse. Landing time now determined 0814. Requesting clearance. We'll be ready for you, Rocky. Out. 
Landing is 08.14, but you set your timer for 08.30. That'll make an error of 16 minutes, which will give us time to blast off. But it won't give Rocky time enough to find it. Come in. You're coming with me, Drake, just in case Rocky has some ideas that don't go along with mine. Passengers aboard, eh? Well, that's all right with me. Now, Rocky, switch on blast off synchronizer. Rocky, go ahead. Start climbing. Any minute now, any second, we're going up in smoke. Then you better go pull some switches if you want to live. Now don't try it. Come on.
police ranger is going to put anything over on me. to the XP-2. Come in, Office of Space Affairs. Well, Mr. Secretary, I must say this is quite a twist by being on the receiving end here. But everything's under control. You can return to base. State landing time. We're all clear for you. We'll come in now, Rocky, and congratulations. Mission successful, thanks to you. Well, I hope you enjoyed Beyond the Moon, Rocky Jones, Space Ranger. The actor who played Winky, Rocky Jones' sidekick and comic relief, was an actor named Scotty Beckett. And he had first had success as one of the R-Gang kids in the Little Rascals uh, series of movies in the late 1930s. Uh, after Little Rascals, his career kind of fell off and he had trouble finding work as an adolescent and as an adult actor until he got this part in Rocky Jones Space Ranger and his career kind of uh, picked up a little bit. He uh, filmed most of the early episodes and um, they took a break during the filming of the show and uh, we're going to film the rest of the episodes a couple of months later. And just before the first episodes started to air, Scotty Beckett got himself into some trouble. He was arrested for a concealed weapons charge and armed robbery. Uh, he managed to make bail, uh, but then decided to flee to Mexico, where he again was arrested for a weapons charge. He spent about four months in prison in Mexico, and by the time he got back to the United States, he had been written out of Rocky Jones' Space Ranger and replaced by another actor. Unfortunately, Beckett had several run-ins with the law later in life and ultimately ended up uh, being injured in a car crash where he was left uh, unable to walk without crutches. In 1968, he checked himself into a nursing home for medical attention and was found in his room four days later um, dead. It appeared to be a suicide as there were barbiturates and a note left, but the coroner's report listed it as unknown. Unfortunately, Scotty Beckett seems to have been another one of those Hollywood child actors who just didn't seem to be able to make the transition to adult roles and adult life. Anyway, uh, we'll have another episode of Rocky Jones coming up in the future, and I hope you enjoyed this one.